Remember that nervous feeling on report card day as a kid? You spend all day with a racing mind wondering what grade you got? Straight A's? <laughs> Not me. Some B's sprinkled in there? Ooh, will mom and dad be mad about C's and D's? Or, heaven forbid, did I get any F's? Hold on! Why isn't there a grade E? Well, the short answer is that F simply stands for failure on the grading scale, since failure begins with the letter F. Teachers didn't want E to be interpreted as excellent beyond primary school, as percentages come in when you're in middle school, high school, and college. Poor lonely E. The other grades in the grading scale are generally considered passing grades, although D is also a failing grade in some schools. Every district is different, but in general, the logic is that by skipping the E, F is set apart as a failing grade. So, in most schools, if you get an A, B, C, or D, you pass. An F means you failed that class. But the poor E wasn't always excluded. The first school to use a grading scale model, similar to our modern one, was a school in Massachusetts called Mount Holyoke College, an all-women's university. In 1887, their scale went from A to E, with E as the failing grade. A year later, the F was added. Actually, a student received an F if their overall performance was below a 75%. Before the F was added, it was the E that stood for this lowest performance. The college made this change to their grading scale to allow a little wiggle room to give students one more passing letter grade. Once the F was added, E meant that the student's performance was between 75 and 79%, which was still considered passing. As this grading scale grew in popularity across the US, the E was eventually removed to simplify the scale, as F intuitively stood for failure. The percentages that signify each letter grade differ between school districts in the US, but F is still that failing grade. Differences in the grading scale has become a hot topic recently, because now grade point average, or GPA, comes into play. There's a question in some districts whether a 90% is an A or a B. Parents are concerned whether their school's grading scale is fair and comparable to the college board, but that's another video. How about some other fun facts about U.S. schools? 1. Our measurement system Yes, yes, it has to be addressed. The standard measurement system is still taught in schools, while the rest of the world uses the metric system which many believe is much easier to understand. In the USA, it is taught that there are 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, etc. Maybe the US will catch up with the rest of the world one day, hmm. or vice versa. 2. Dress codes and uniforms Only about 20% of US primary, junior, and high schools require uniforms. Besides at these few, American students can generally wear what they want to school although each school will have their own dress codes. Requiring the midriff and most of the shoulders to be covered, and for shorts and skirts to be a certain length, are two pretty standard examples of common American school dress codes. Clothing that displays anything inappropriate in the design, such as offensive language, is of course not allowed. In college, though, there is much more freedom, so all bets are off as far as clothing goes. Number 3. The structure of the U.S. school system The U.S. school system starts with preschool, which is actually somewhat optional, then kindergarten, which a student would ideally start at about age 5. Then comes grades 1 through 5, and sometimes 6, also known as elementary school. Next comes junior high, also known as middle school, which is grades 7 and 8. Sometimes middle school is grades 6 through 8. It all depends on your school district. Then finally comes high school, which is generally grades 9 through 12, with the goal of finishing 12th grade at age 17 or 18. In the US, there are a variety of ways that you can complete your high school education. You can go to school online nowadays, or attend public or private school, even homeschool. But each of these grade levels must be completed before you can attend college. Number 4. The American Academic Year American students spend about 180 days a year in school. This is in the middle of the road. There are countries where students attend more days of school and countries where students attend less. As far as breaks go, summer break is the longest break that American students have. 
usually lasting 9 to 10 weeks starting in June, depending on the district. American students also get a fall break, a winter break, and a spring break. That sounds like a lot of breaks, but the American school day itself is longer than in some other countries. School is typically from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., or some small variation of that time frame, attending Monday through Friday. The point is, the American school day is almost as long as the standard 8 to 5 American workday. 5. America's first school is almost 400 years old. The original 13 American colonies opened the Boston Latin School, America's first public school, in 1635. It's still standing and functional today. The school has prestigious admission requirements, and it regularly performs better than other elite schools in Boston. But not every student that has passed through this historic school's doors has been a success. One of its most famous dropouts is Benjamin Franklin. Their motto is Latin for, we are first. Talk about old school. <laughs> Number 6. Early U.S. Academics Early American schools didn't teach subjects like reading or science. The early colonists wanted to teach their children more about family and community values so that they could be productive members of society. I mean, in 1635, the colonies were a pretty young society, so it makes sense that teaching their children about the foundations of community was a very integral part of their education. 7. Preschool Earlier, I mentioned preschool being part of the American educational system. If U.S. parents want their child to get ahead, or just to acclimate them to a social learning situation, enrolling their child in preschool at about 3 or 4 years old is considered ideal. It prepares the children for kindergarten and gets them in a school routine. A choice of a full day or a half day is usually offered. But in the last few years, fewer and fewer 3-year-olds are being enrolled in preschool. In 2016, only about half of 3 to 5 year olds were enrolled in some kind of full day preschool program. This percentage is much higher in European countries. 8. The US Workplace and Higher Education About 85% of current jobs in the US, and 90% of new ones, require some college or post secondary education. It used to be that college was the only smart option for high school graduates in the US. But now, the demand for technical schools and skilled tradesmen and women, and by that I mean automotive workers, welders, plumbers, and members of similar necessary fields, are on the rise. 9. Field trips Most experienced U.S. teachers agree that field trips can and should be an integral part of a student's education. Students get many benefits from educational field trips. Museums, a theater to see a play or a concert, and art galleries are all good examples of fun and educational field trips. Most teachers agree that field trips like these is one of the best ways to apply what students have learned in the classroom setting to the real world. Field trips encourage creative and critical thinking, observation skills, and promotes cultural understanding. Plus, students are making fun memories with their friends. Do you have a story about a particularly memorable field trip? Let's hear about it down below. Number 10. School Sports American schools offer a variety of after-school activities, but joining a sports team is probably the most popular. Most schools offer football, the American kind, basketball, wrestling, tennis, volleyball, softball, and baseball. Where possible, there is a boys' and girls' team. These sports are a big deal, especially football and basketball. The whole community comes to watch their school's team compete against other schools in the district. It's exciting and promotes school spirit. The football and basketball teams will have cheerleaders too, a squad of mostly girls who dress in a uniform with pom-poms and do routines to music to cheer their team on. 11. Relaxed Classroom Environment The American classroom is a pretty relaxed place to learn. Students are still expected to raise their hands when they want to talk or ask a question. But generally, open discussion is encouraged. Students and teachers often joke with each other and exchange high fives in the hallways. Teachers also make a big effort to work with those students who need extra help, like staying after school or coming in early if a student has a question about homework, a paper they wrote, or something discussed in class. Teachers will also offer extra credit, too if students are really struggling. 12. 
Each state is different. The most unique thing about U.S. education is that each state is going to be a little different. That's 50 different states who all have multiple cities and counties that are homes to our schools. There will be differences in grading scales, testing requirements, class structure, rules, pretty much everything. No school in the U.S. is the same. And that's the beauty of it. Since the U.S. has that separation of state, each state can appoint its own panel of educational rule makers. Ah yes, high school memories. I remember I was in that half of the class that made the upper half possible. I'm so proud. Hey, if you learned something new today, give this video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.